Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Charlie. If you are new, my channel is a lifestyle channel and I recently started adding vlogging and I wanted to share today my 2022 book favorites. Now, unfortunately, I had gotten sick in the beginning of last year, so I didn't read anywhere near as much as I usually do. Some years I read 50 books, some years I've read a couple like 30. This year was like really bad. I only read about 15 books, which was upsetting, but again, it's not a competition. I do consider reading a hobby. I don't know if other people do. And I used to collect books. I never utilized my library until this last couple of months when I noticed that I was spending so much money on books and not being able to keep up with my TBR list. So I started checking out books at the library and then reading at my leisure. I either renew them, return them, and re get them at a later date if I didn't finish. So this year I read about 15 books. I think I have 10 to share with you that were my five stars favorite books of 2022. These are not like my all time favorite books. These are just books that I read this last year that I loved. So if you're interested in that, I would love you to stick around. I know I'm not like a book talk, but I do share my lifestyle and I do share things that I love. And I did ask if anyone wanted to see this and a few people said yes. So here I am doing it for you. I will share some favorite TV shows and movies. I'll probably put that into one, but let's get started. So like I said, so I did write things down and not like opinions and sub synops synopsises for you because a lot of these books I read quite a while ago. Um, so I wanted to remember I did this last night. Here's the thing. Nothing's in like any type of specific order. This is not in the order that I read the books and I only have four physical copies. Like I said, I've been really using my library lately. So the very, so I'll pop up somewhere exactly um what the book looks like so let's just get started um if this is something people will start enjoying i will share more of my reading experiences with you i've only read one and a half books so far in 2023 and both so far have been great so the very first one i want to talk about is no surprise i'm sure if you are a reader you have read these and it's a colleen hoover it starts with us and ends with us it starts with us and it ends with us. These are contemporary romance, contemporary romance, domestic, and a new adult. So I had first been, ex I first had my first experience. My first experience with Colleen Hoover was Verity. I had seen it all over the internet and I had never read anything from her. And that was an experience in and of itself. It is a little bit of a triggering book, um, a little unrealistic in my opinion, but very, very fast paced very fun it's going to keep your attention so if you're looking for something like that i definitely recommend it so i wrote down what i have to read this you guys because sometimes i get like scatterbrained so i'm going to read to you what i wrote what i felt like the book was about so you have lily she is pretty successful in life and she is looking forward to opening her own business in the floral like doing floral arrangements and then she randomly meets this guy ryle who is a neurosurgeon and he has like this weird aversion to marriage, relationships, and um, at first she finds it to be like off-putting, but slowly they start to kind of fall in love with each other. Um, they're both successful in life, but not in the romance, you know, the romance department. But when Lily was much younger, she had like this whirlwind romance with um, a homeless teenager who was staying in a abandoned home next to her where she ends up taking care of him, and his name is Atlas. So after they meet, they start falling in love, they do get married, and then dark secrets start coming out. There is a lot of domestic violence and a lot of triggering things that can bother people. Um, and then she has to fight with the feelings of being in love with Atlas still and loving Ryle. So it is very, very um, like a contemporary romance, a domestic romance. It's really good. And then you have It Ends With Us where you deal with divorce the aftermaths of domestic violence, trusting persons, and re-falling in love. And it is very good. I flew through those books in two days. Um, I was able to read them back to back because I had just um, heard of the books. So I was fortunate enough and now they're both out so you will be able to. I think a lot of people have read these. They're really, really good. They're, I feel like they're new adult. So <clears throat> they're not quite young adult. They're not quite like adult. They're like right there in the beginning. These are great books. I don't think that I think any age will really enjoy it, um, but definitely read the trigger warnings because there is domestic violence and there is the topics of homelessness and some things that might be 
triggering. I gave both books a five star. I will link my Goodreads if you want to re uh, look at it. I, I don't do too much. I don't write reviews in there often, but I do just log my books. But those two books were so much fun. So I will be picking up more of Colleen Hoover here in the future. So the next set I read, I actually have the physical copies of, and I love these. So my number one read is first I love fantasy high fantasy they're my favorite then I would say like um thriller horror and then contemporary with a little bit of romance with heavy issues I like I do enjoy taboo books as well but I did complete I did complete the Carvel series from Stephanie Garber I'm hoping saying that right so it's Carvel legendary and finale it is really really good i love these and i again these were all out by the time i um came across them and was obsessed so what i wrote down about these they are high fantasy young adult and a lot of magic i know that might be put might put off somebody who's a little bit older but if you enjoy fantasy i think you're gonna love these so what i wrote down was scarlet and her sister tella have lived with a cruel and hateful father their whole life scarlet is supposed to be in an arranged marriage so her lifelong dream of participating in carnival kind of goes down the drain so what carnival is is a <clears throat> kind of like a what did i write it's like um So basically it's like a show where the audience participates there's a lot of magic and at the end you win whatever is that year it has been going on for years and years and the ma the like master of it is legend so what i wrote was she has waited to participate and right before she is supposed to get married she gets a ticket to join carnival it is like an interactive um carnival i don't know exactly how to explain it but it's full of magic and it's a lot of fun and then her sister tella gets kidnapped by the uh, legend the master of the carnival and scarlet must do anything possible to find and rescue her sister so that's the first book and then it's the continuation where um <clears throat> she saves her sister it says after being swept up in the magical world of carnival donatella her sister finally escapes her father and saves her sister scarlet from a dangerous arranged marriage the girl should be celebrating, but Tella isn't free. She is desperate. She made a desperate bargain with a mysterious criminal, and Tella owes him no one has ever and Tella owes him what no one has ever been able to deliver, the true name of legend. And then it just continues on. So the first book is heavily about Scarlet, and the last two is about Donatella, her sister. These are so, so much fun. Lots of magic, lots of fantasy. I love the covers. These are gorgeous. I think you will love these if you like high fantasy. So much fun. So you have high fantasy, romance, magic, unrealistic, but so much fun, especially if you like carnival-esque type books. So basically, she gets this ticket to be an interactive participant, but her sister ends up kidnapped. So she's not only playing the Caravel game, she's trying to find her sister along the way. And she can't trust many people because you don't know if they're actors or real. It's amazing. And I really think you will enjoy it if you are somebody who enjoys high fantasy because I loved it more than... They were probably one of my favorite series to date. And the year previous, I had read all of Sarah J. Mass's um, A Court of Thorn of Roses. So they're right up there with that. So if you like A Court of Thorn of Roses, give these a try because they are super duper fun. So the next book I read, I did not, ha I don't have a physical, cop physical copy of it. I did borrow it from my local library. You will find this in the young adult section. And it's the book Small Favors from Aaron A. Craig. This is a fantasy, historical fiction, and a YA retelling of none other than Rumpelstiltskin. Now I know that sounds silly, but I feel like this was more closer to new adult. I I loved this one. So basically, it's this excellent retelling of Rumpelstiltskin, and I said it's very similar to the movie The Village. Ellery lives in a small town of Amity Falls with her family. It's on a mountain range, and they don't get visitors, and they've been warned not to travel far into the woods because of these monsters that... Um, live there in the past it's something to keep them scared and kind of contained to this village so they don't get many vil uh, visitors um and then when the winter starts coming in they send out a party like of men to go resupply the village well when they do they happen to not come back and they are found 
unfortunately dead and they think that the monsters have once again returned you know that fear tactic and as the winter comes people start acting strange strange things start happening and then all of a sudden she meets this nameless man who promises to keep her safe and supplied with goods but she never finds out what his actual name is. So it is so much fun. And at first I didn't know it was a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, but as I further got in, I'm like, okay, I this is definitely a retelling. And I know some people can be iffy about that, but I think you would really like it, especially if you like, um, what's that author? She did the Beauty and the Beast retelling. Occur um, oh goodness gracious, it's one of my favorite series of retellings. Um, I'll put it up on the screen. So it's basically a loosely based off of Beauty and the Beast retelling, a curse so broken, a curse, you know, you probably are screaming it. So I'll put it up here. Um, I like retellings. I think they're a lot of fun and Small Favors was excellent. I think I read it in three days. It was so entertaining. I just wanted to keep reading it. I loved it. There was nothing that lagged. It was a lot of fun. And um, Ellery's character was like super strong, strong female lead. And I loved it. So this year I wanted to finish all of Riley Sager's um, novel. So that's what I did. So I did The uh, House Across the Lake. Then I also finished Lock Every Door and The Last Time I Lied. So I um, read everything up to date with his book. So I have no, as of right now, um, I think he might be coming out with something new. But as of right now, I've read all his books. So this I really like. So it was a paranormal mystery and then I read Lock Every Door and The Last Time I Lied, which are both contemporary mystery and crime. That's both basically what his books consist of, either paranormal mysteries or mystery and crime. This one was a lot of fun. So you have Casey, she's recently widowed, and she's an actress that retreats to her lake house to kind of get out of the limelight of some of the stupid things she's done after her husband's death. Um, and she has a severe... I would say a major alcohol problem and she starts spying on her neighbors. So the neighbors are a kind of like an odd couple, but they're wealthy. The wife has most of the money. She's a retired model and she starts spying on them. And then one day Casey is sitting on her porch and notices that Catherine is drowning in the lake and she saves her life and they become pretty friendly and then all of a sudden Catherine mysteriously disappears and then Casey while battling drinking and not having people believe her she tries to find what happened to Catherine. I like this. I gave it five stars. I thought it was very entertaining. I know not a lot of people like that one but I really really did. I thought it was fun, fast paced. The ending was a little weird but fun nonetheless. So then I went on to read um uh, last time I lied I think I gave that about four stars it was basically a girl sweep away camp and it's a murder mystery it's a lot of fun um not my favorite but it was fun nonetheless so if you like kind of like that um sleep away camp where of course somebody goes missing and then the girl comes back years later to find out what happens you'll enjoy that and then the last time I lied was that what no lock every door was a lot of fun I think I gave that five stars and it was Jules you follow Jules, she is um, broke, single. She recently left either a marriage or a relationship, I can't quite remember. And she goes to this upscale apartment where she is um, looking to become a house sitter. And there is many people that take on this role. She's not the only house sitter at this upscale apartment, but the only rules is absolutely no visitors and she cannot leave and sleep anywhere else other than this apartment. And she'll make this boatload of money, like 12 grand, at the end of six weeks something crazy and she starts to, and you cannot talk to any of the residents they're all rich famous or both rich or famous both whatever you cannot speak to them you have to leave them alone so basically you stay in your apartment and you uh babysit it they don't want any un they don't want any unoccupied and they don't want any unoccupied apartment so then she becomes friends with this girl ingrid who starts to tell her about some strange happenings at this upscale apartment and then Ingrid goes missing. Very cliche but still fun nonetheless. It ends up finding out that the hotel has, not the hotel, that the apartments have these dark histories. Ingrid kind of was getting um, wind of what was going on. You can kind of go from there. Still a fun read, fast paced, very easy read. Definitely recommend anything from Riley Sager but I wanted to finish up 
all of his books now. I'm completely caught up. Okay, so the very, very last... Okay, so the last book I'm going to talk about, like I said, I read about 15 books, but these were my top um, favorites. And then I can continue doing this as I read a little more um, and start recommending it. And I can recommend if you would like past books that I read. So the last book that I really want to recommend is The Book of Cold Cases. Okay, so the last book I'm going to recommend is The Book of Cold Cases. I don't have the physical copy, but like I said, I'll make sure there's pictures put up. So this is a paranormal horror. I know some people didn't like this one, but I loved it. So this is set in the late 70s. It is a duo timeline. So you travel back to the late 70s and current time. So you have two men that are mur murdered with the same gun and they blame this rich eccentric, eccentric woman named Beth. She ends up getting um, off on the murder charges and goes on to become like reclusive in her um, mansion. She does have money, family money, old money, whatever you want to call it. She is accused of killing these two men because she's rich and gorgeous. She's acquitted, but then she no longer wants to go out in public. And then you have, what was her name? So that's Beth. And then you have Shay, who currently works as a receptionist by day, but she's a famous podcaster by night who covers murder mystery. And her dream is to interview Beth. And by some chance, Beth comes into her doctor's office and she just happens to ask her, hey, can I interview you for my podcast? And for whatever reason, Beth says yes. She starts to go over to Beth's mansion where weird paranormal things start happening. And um, Shay has to determine whether Beth was actually innocent or is she with a cold-blooded murder. I thought it was a fun mystery. Again, fast-paced. That's the kind of books that I like. Something that grabs your attention immediately, holds on to you tight, and you read it through in a couple of days where you can't put the book down. Unfortunately, if I'm not invested immediately, it's harder for me to really enjoy the book. Right now, I am finishing up The Haunting and Hunting of Adelaide. I have the second book I just picked up from my library. They just got it in and I'm reading Malice House. So I will update you on any of these. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry that I have to write down a lot of this and read what it is. Some of the stuff I've read nine months ago you know what I mean 12 months ago so I needed a little refresher and I went on to my goodreads and then I would like refresh what the book was about and immediately remember how much I love these novels um I think I didn't share about five books that I didn't that I read but I think it was like clowns in a corn field that I read that was like eh I know people love it it was cheesy but it was a lot of fun and then I read The Butcher and the Wren um by the lady Elena um, from the podcast Morbid. Um, while I enjoyed it, um, I didn't care for the ending. I thought the ending was quite rushed and strange, but her writing was really good. Um, I think that's all I didn't share. And I think I read one of the, um, Sarah J. Mask Tog series. I think I read the third book in and I just didn't want to talk about it till I finished the series. But I hope you enjoyed this. I know this isn't like my normal content, but I wanted to do, like I said, one vlog a week and then one kind of sit down video. And I really wanted to share some of my favorites before the end of January. So I will compile a list of some of the TV shows and some of my favorite um movies that I watched in 2022 because I watched a lot of good stuff but I hope you enjoy this I hope maybe you pick up some of these books definitely leave some of your recommendations down below some of the stuff that down below not down below, some of the stuff that you love to read some of the things that you've read in 2022 any of your recommendations what your favorite genre is I don't care I love sharing with you and I hope to hear um some of your favorites of this year or last year I should say sorry so I hope you enjoyed this I would love you to stick around and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video bye guys